Welcome to the Ninth Grade Experience. I'm your host, Chris Dutchko. As a teacher of freshmen and one of our Freshman Mentor Committee faculty advisors, I spend a lot of my school day thinking about and helping students with the successful transition from middle school to the halls of Emmaus High School. The goal of this podcast is to give you the story of the ninth grade here at Emmaus High School through the people who live it daily, the students and staff. We will attempt to touch on the real issues and stories that ninth grade students face, ranging from academics to athletics, technical school, and just trying to find your way as one person in a community of approximately 2,700 students. We will also look to speak with some of the influential staff members who play a key part in a student's ninth grade year. It is the hope that future ninth grade students and their families can use the tips and insights provided here to begin making connections to their potential new school and learn more about the day-to-day lives of the students that they will one day become and realize from day one that ninth grade counts. You can learn more about this episode and all of the episodes of the ninth grade experience by following us on Twitter at EHSFMC or at Chris Stuchko, or following the hashtag EHS9Counts, or our website, sites.google.com slash eastpennsd.org slash ninth grade experience. Before we jump into today's topic, let's thank our sponsor for this show, the East Penn Education Foundation. This podcast has been made possible through a $1,000 grant awarded to teachers like me each year who are attempting to do unique projects in the area of science, technology, engineering, arts, and mathematics. The foundation supports programs that put learning in motion by giving students the tools they need to think actively in a complex and changing world. You can follow them on Facebook at EPSD Education Foundation, on Twitter at EPSD Ed Found, or on Instagram at EPSD Ed Foundation. Now on to the show. The beginning of the 2020-21 school year will provide students with a unique school experience unlike anything currently offered at Emmaus High School. The Jasper Learning Initiative will debut with up to 125 upcoming ninth grade students who are looking to learn in a setting that values collaboration, curiosity, and authenticity that promises to be a community-inspired, project-based, and inquiry-driven format. With its name taken from a hard but workable mineral found in our area, Jasper is looking to create exciting and memorable learning experiences that benefit both students and the local community. In this episode, Mike Mahalik, Supervisor of Secondary Curriculum for Science, Technology, Engineering, and Math, takes us through the program's formation and some of the commonly asked questions about Jasper's role within Emmaus High School. So if you are a problem solver, collaborator, and critical thinker, looking to extend your learning beyond the classroom, let's meet Mike to learn about the Jasper Learning Initiative. Welcome to this episode of the Ninth Grade Experience Podcast. We have a special uh, episode here today, not necessarily focused on uh, our current ninth grade students, but a program that is going to be implemented here at the high school uh, starting next year. So if you are a middle school student listening to this or a middle school parent, you're going to get lots of great information about one of our newest programs here. And here to talk about that is Mike Mahalik, who is our supervisor of secondary curriculum for science, technology, engineering, and math, known as STEM, um, here in the school district. So, um, Mike, thanks a lot for coming in to talk to us today. Thank you for having me, and thanks for doing all these podcasts. It's been really helpful. Thanks. Uh, hopefully, uh, people are listening to them. We're trying to get some a uh, uh, little bit more visibility for them, and I think this will be a good one because um, this is a, a pretty strong district initiative here. So, I think uh, people will be uh, listening to this one, trying to figure out. So, we're here today to talk about a new program that's going to start for the 2020-21 school year, which is called the Jasper Learning Initiative. So, can you just um, take us through uh, quickly, um, just a kind of a brief uh, explanation of what the Jasper Learning Initiative is, is going to be? Sure. So, basically, this is going to be the first time at Emmaus High School where we're offering kids a, a different way to go through their high school experience in terms of how they learn. So, 
Um, as you know, up till now, we have lots of different courses for kids to choose from, but this is going to be different, different given that kids can choose that they want to learn a more project-based, maybe authentic, collaborative, community-based way. So we want to give kids that experience. Um, we're going to, we're basically saying to the kids, if you sign up for Jasper, you're going to be taught those core classes in a, you know, an inquiry driven, um, you know, type of style. So it's for kids that want to learn that way. So it could be, um, you know, for a bunch of different kids, it's not going to be for everyone, but, um, that's kind of what we're doing in the classroom. But then we also, we're, we're trying to put together something that's really going to, um, give these kids something to be part of in their four years. Cause you know, in a big school, well, over 2,800 kids, kids can, fall through the cracks and we want to give these kids something uh, really important special to be a part of now this is, sounds like a really unique ninth grade experience and usually we start every podcast by asking about the guest ninth grade experience mm -hmm. so i do have a little insider information that you are from the other school on cedar crest boulevard at parkland high school so what was your ninth grade experience like at parkland and kind of you know comparing it to what um jasper is going to be like can you kind of like talk about maybe your experience and how you would you have preferred a jasper type ninth grade experience so actually when i was in ninth grade i was still in a junior high so i was in a building for seven eight and nine my 10th grade experience is more similar to what kids are going through when they come up to high school now in ninth grade i'm um, given you're going to a new building you're you know you're back to the bottom of the totem pole um <laughs> But when I look back at, at early years in high school, there there are some classes, and it's been it's been a while. But there's there's some classes that definitely stand out, and those are the ones where I actually I, I did some really cool things. Uh, I think every person in on the planet, though, when they go when they look back at their their years in school, there's going to be some adults that stand out, and I think that's a really cool thing. Like who are the people that had a big impact on your life, and so that does play a role in, in, in Jasper and what we're doing. But for me, I I would have liked it because um, I think there's still projects that I I moved two years ago, and I still found high school projects that I have been holding on to for the classes <laughs> that I really liked. And those were in, um, I had an architecture engineering class, and, and I just loved it. Um, I, I remember designing a home thinking I'm designing my future home someday, and I have the blueprint still to this day. So there's that kind of stuff where I just, I love doing real authentic projects. Um, I also think back to some classes that I had, and, and I, now I roll my eyes like, I don't know what I, you know, what I got out of, you know, got out of some of those classes. But, um, yeah, I definitely would have been a, been a type of kid that would have wanted to go Jasper. Did you, um, I know because my wife uh, graduated from Parkland, did you ever do anything in the outdoor classroom at the, uh, was it Orfield Middle School? Now that's yeah. the middle school, it was the high school at that point? I, re I remember just a few times, we didn't use it often, but a few times we would walk across the street to go into that, yeah, that outdoor, it's basically the woods, we'd go to yeah. the woods and do some, some biology work, but it wasn't, it wasn't too often. Um, looking back, it's something I, I really wish we would have done more of, um, especially because all we had to do was walk across the street. It was right there for us. But then when the high school switched, we lost that, you know, that the high, high school doesn't have that, that forest necessarily right across the street anymore, which is a shame. But, you know, hopefully they're util utilizing it at the middle school there. Now, and before you uh, took your current position, you were a teacher here at Emmaus High School for 14 years. And, and your classes that you taught were very unique. So you kind of bring that um, style of learning to your to the to this position um, when you taught in Emmaus you were doing a lot of the earth and space uh, electives but you developed a lot of courses even from like the ground up yourself so can you just um, give a little bit of your background kind of because you are somebody that obviously believes in this style of learning um, you've developed it you know you uh, take students on the field trips to the national parks a lot of the uh, you know learning out in nature initiatives and then those kind of things so um, you, you don't only really, like you've actually live this experience of designing a uh, cur curriculum like this and actually like implementing it in the classroom. So what was that experience like for you in the classroom here at Emmaus High School? Yeah, my times in the classroom here at the high school were fantastic. Um, really had, had 14 great years in the classroom. So I taught earth and space electives. But within those elective courses, I had kids who, who needed that class because they needed something to graduate. I had kids who wanted to be in there just because they, they thought it would be really interesting and um, you know, uh, just a fun class to take. So I had freshmen all the way up to seniors. I had the whole mix in every single class, and I didn't know it any other way. And so for 14 years, I knew that every every class was going to be a big mix. And I knew that I had kids in there that were genuinely interested, and I knew I, that obviously there's some kids that weren't so interested, but I had to find a way to make it interesting. And, and so that's where um, I really tried to bring those classes, uh, you know, bring the, the the real science into the classroom the best that I could. But then I also saw a tremendous value in bringing the kids out of the classroom into nature whenever possible. So um, in 2007, I, I brought my first group of kids to Alaska 
And that was, for me, life-changing uh, because I saw what was happening to kids when you bring them into national parks and, and how education became very real and relevant and, um, and kind of humbling to some being in the national parks. And, and so I stuck with that, and I did uh, a lot of research on that when I was uh, doing my master's program at Oregon State University. And that was another thing that was really big in my life, just finding, um, learning more about the research behind how kids and how all adults learn when we want to learn. And that's the difference. So like in a, in a traditional classroom, we go into this classroom and, and we, we, we learn pretty much what we're told we need to learn. Yeah. But then there's so many other ways that adults and children, you name it, um, learn when they want to. And it could be as simple as like flipping through the TV or going through, you know, going on a walk in a park or an aquarium. And so that's what I, I studied and I, I found it really fascinating. There's so many different ways that we can tap, tap into um, people's curiosity and give them learning experiences that might not be traditional. And one of those, one of the things that it, uh, the Jasper um, Learning Initiative seems to want to target is like the community partnerships. And uh, we're recording this on Monday, February 10th. Um, and I saw over the weekend that you talked about the first uh, partnership that you've created um, with Kalmbach Memorial Park in McCungy. So how can we, how is the program uh, thinking about leveraging like that partnership with, you know, you talked about, obviously we're not taking people to Alaska in year one, mm -hmm. but um, we can take them to McCungy. Mm -hmm. And uh, what are, what are some of the things um, as you're developing these partnerships with these uh, local organizations, what are they looking for to get out of it? And what are we as the Jasper initi Learning Initiative like attempting to do with like that kind of community uh, group there? Yeah, that's a great question. So there's, I guess you can say when I'm, when I'm having a conversation with someone about an eventual partnership, there's three different ways that we can, um, we can get something going. The first one would be ways for us to bring our kids to them or to their place. The second would be them coming to us. And then the third one would be potential internships down the road. And there might be some partnerships that we have that have all three. There might be some that are just, you know, focused on the one. Um, when I met with uh, the Broskis, uh, it was about a couple of weeks ago, at Kalmbach Park, we, we uh, did a little walk around the grounds, and it, it was awesome because there were legitimate, genuine problems that, that they're facing um, on their on their grounds that they need help with and they're not really sure where to go. And I, I said to Mr. Broski, like, just hold that thought because, like, I'll bring a group of kids out here and we can work on this and we can give you some ideas. And, and that that's pretty awesome to me because now the kids – potentially next year going to go to the park work on some things but it's going to be real and authentic like we're going to learn about biodiversity while in the forest instead of being in the classroom or have like an authentic context for for why do we even care about biodiversity or there's some other issues over at the park that that'll be really interesting to explore too and it's not just science um, it, 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 there could be some humanities that we can incorporate but really the partnerships are going to be pretty diverse we're going to have lots of them um, the next one that, that you'll probably see on social media is the um, a local Emmaus Arts Innovation um, Center. That's going to be a, a thing that we're all going to know about in a couple of years. But that's a really cool one for, um, you know, more for, for the arts. And then there's other ones that I've had. I've had really good conversations lately with um, professionals who are more interested in the internship part. So I think what I'm trying to do right now is trying to get a wide variety of partnerships so that when a kid is interested in Jasper, like, hey, I really want to be an architect, I can say, well, we're going to be able to have an internship for you in a couple of years for you to pursue that passion of yours. When we're talking about the Jasper Learning Initiative here, we're talking a lot about these community partnerships and we're talking about, um, you know, making the learning real world and authentic. So what has the reaction been like um, when you've pitched these ideas to local people in the community? or within the school district or you know we have the East Penn Education Foundation um, that's trying to link people together like even school board members so how has the response been for you know so far in the early goings for the project the response has been incredibly supportive um, it, it's and I'm not just saying that just to, to pitch the program but this is almost something um, that most of the people I talk to it's almost something like that they've been waiting for and that they're they're, they're ready for this and um, one of the things that that did kickstart Jasper or gave us the, the confirmation that this was this was the right thing um, to do to offer some of these kids was back in the fall um, we had an evening where I had some business people come in and they talked about computers and business and they came in and we got them together with some of our teachers some of our students and we just talked about um, you know the curriculum about trends that you know what, what's going on like where, where are things going in the next 10 15 years and what do we need to do as a school district to to prepare our kids to to be better in the, in the business and, and technology fields and they gave us some ideas that that we're going to um, you know definitely include in Jasper and so we're, we're going to be able to teach these kids skills that are so much easier to be taught 
in an authentic context, like in the real world and in a, in a classroom. And we just think that we're going to really be able to prepare these kids for you know college or if they want to go career after high school, we're going to be able to prepare them for either one. But a lot of that does um, go back to the input that they gave us back in, back in the fall. So it's it's one of the interesting things about the program is we're you're basically building it from the ground up at this time. So when you have people from the community that are saying, "Hey, this would be great if you added this in," the program's still responsive enough where it can, you know, change and mold to like what the community needs. And there's like a lot of uh, unique things in our community that I don't think even a lot of people really know about or like can would even think about. Like Kalmbach Park as an example is like there's not like a huge sign for it. It's kind of, you know, not on the main road. And if you didn't know it was there, like I've been to Easter egg hunts there, but that's the only reason I've ever been there. So it's really interesting like that, that, and it's a huge area back there. So like kind of thinking about what the community needs. And I think that's really an interesting way to look at it is like, you know, Emmaus High School and, and the Jasper Learning Initiative can be actually like very responsive to the community needs. And then, you know, hopefully we develop kids that go into the community and then can actually solve the problems in our own community. Yeah, absolutely. I think you you just said something that's um, that can't be overlooked, and that's we're gonna we're gonna be able to offer value back to the community. If we're just taking from them, taking their time and taking their resources, this is not going to be sustainable. But we're going to continuously look for ways for our kids and our program to give back to the community in ways that are going to help them. So if I'm so the people listening right now, like our current ninth graders, um, this isn't open to those students right now. Um, but we have our our eighth graders at IR and LMMS, and their parents hopefully are listening to this. Um, maybe they've come out to one of the information sessions, or maybe they'll you know take a look on the website. But now I think we've we've talked a lot about what the program is, but I'm sure a lot of people just have questions about like the nuts and bolts of the program, mm-hmm. like what's involved with it, how is it different, like what you know do I do I have to do something different? And the, the website pretty clearly states it's like, you know, one of the, the myths or the frequently asked questions. It, it clearly says that, you know, you're still an Emmaus High School student and you're still going to get an Emmaus High School diploma. But very briefly, can you, if, if I'm a concerned eighth grader or I want to apply for this program, like what is the basic setup of, of the Jasper Learning Initiative like during my school day? So I come in and, and what happens? Yep. So instead of having the single periods, we would have our Jasper courses offered in a block period. So instead of period one GSI, period two English, you'd have alternating days of blocks. Maybe Monday, it's period one and two, you're in GSI, but then on Tuesday, you go to English. So there's that. That's that's one thing right off the bat. We're going to offer four courses in Jasper. There's GSI, uh, ninth grade English, American Studies one, and a new course called Design and Development. So those are the four core courses. We're also going to be offering kids the PE or the wellness fitness course, in addition to an advisory every other day. And then that's, that's Jasper. There's still... Um, three periods in their day where they're going to be able to take whatever math class they need and to be able to take study hall or electives depending on you know what it what what it is that they want to do so jasper will take up a little bit more than half their day but they're still going to have time to to do whatever math and other electives whatever courses that they want to do and they would be in a a regular lunch and they can you know do still do all the elective stuff after school um you know because you're going to the students are going to be at emmaus high school so they're not you don't have to worry about them getting back and forth and uh, missing out on like activities after school sports and and other things clubs and activities and things like that right yeah they'll they'll be in the same hallway same same building they'll have the same lunch period as as a you know, the rest of Emmaus High School students, but you're right, like the, the after school activities, we definitely want them to be able to participate in all of that. And there's no reason why they, they wouldn't be able to. So the design and development class, um, design thinking is kind of a, one of those like educational and like real world buzzwords right now of kind of like, what is design thinking? And, and I think on the, the, the site I saw that it was kind of defined it as like a shared language to understand problems. And I think it seems like that's something that's going to cut across all the classes and, and dealing with this. So what is the idea behind the design and development class? Um, how is it going to like work? Is it, cause obviously if I'm a parent listening to this or I'm a student and it's like design and development, like, are we making and stuff Mm -hmm. are we you know what so what is that going to look like for a student if you kind of know at this point yeah it's going to look like a lot of different things um that's that's going to be a really really fun interesting class um to to watch next year so design development like you said it's going to be based on design thinking or problem solving but the um the key components of that are teaching kids how to solve problems but going through the right steps like going through the research phase um having empathy like who are we designing pro- who are we solving problems for and, and and so like we're we're incorporating different skills um different components into a problem solving uh, protocol that we think we need to be focusing on so number one solving problems with other people in mind like that's a 
I mean, that it's kind of common sense, but like that's who we solve problems for in this yeah. world. And then also not only doing something for somebody else, but then getting other people's feedback. And so that's something that we think that, uh, you know, kids struggle with how they take feedback nowadays. Like how, how do we actually use it to make our products or ideas or, you know, whatever we're doing, how do we use feedback to make things better? And so we want to teach kids the research, the empathy, the feedback, um, and how to make something better throughout, you know, throughout this process. So design and development are going to go through three big projects, all going through the design thinking framework each three, you know, all, all three times. The first project is going to be more of a computer-based project because this is going to meet their computer requirement for graduation, which is uh, a, a key a key part of design development. So they're going to learn a certain software. They're going to learn how to design different shapes and pieces on computer, and then they're going to 3D print them to make a variety of, of different types of, like, um, I, I guess you could say, like, we can just categorize them all as toys. Like, they can make toys with a 3D printer. The second project is going to be take something and make it better. That's where we're going to see kids with a million different ideas. Um, kids who are interested in the arts, like, they can still make something better versus a kid who's going to be more STEM-focused. So the teacher is prepared to be able to uh, to have all these different, different projects going on at the same time and be able to give those kids what they need, but um, teach them this curriculum of, of this problem-solving framework while the students are doing something they care about. And then the third project is going to be more of a passion project. He's going to give them just some, you know, some boundaries. And as long as they can come up with something within those boundaries, they get to pursue something that's really interesting to them. Some of the conversations I've had with kids so far, um, based on their interest, they want to be a web designer, they want to make apps, or they want to do something for the arts. Like There hasn't been a, a, an interest that we're not going to be able to accommodate in design development. So that's really fun because I think kids are going to care about their school so much more when they get to do things that they genuinely care about. Yeah, that, the whole buy-in factor of, like, you know, getting kids to do, like, those authentic tasks, if they get to design them, and it sounds like the, the second or the, the final two projects are going to be basically, like, things that they identify and they mm -hmm. see and getting a chance to do that. And you talked about, like, some of the skills that we focus on, like, accepting feedback and, and, and kind of collaborative work and things like that. And we have an advisory period that's in there, and that's something brand new to Emmaus High School. And it seems like in reading a little bit about that advisory period that there's a lot of things that that are going to happen during that advisory period. But one of the things that um, is going to be taught during that time is like maybe how to respond to feedback, how to be collaborative. So if I'm seeing this, you know, if you look at the sample schedules on the website, you know, there's this advisory block. So what, ex what exactly is advisory? Because it is different than like a guidance session, mm -hmm. it seems like. So what would advisory be like? And how does that help to build the connections uh, between, you know, the student that's coming in in ninth grade into Emmaus High School and, and to the Jasper uh, Learning Initiative as well, too. Yeah, that's a great question. I, I think the key here is the, the main thing that we're trying to do with advisory is give the kids an adult mentor role model in their lives for the four years of high school that really knows the kid. Um, some of our current high school students already have that figure. Maybe it's a teacher that they get along with really well and they stay in touch throughout the years, or it could be a coach in a sport or a club advisor. And we realize that there's a lot of kids at our high school that don't have that adult figure in their lives. As you know, like our, our schedule, you can have a great semester class and then the semester changes and you'll never be back. <clears throat> or, you know, after the after you have that year long class, you never get that teacher again. But we want to give that kid or give the kids that adult figure that's really going to know them. That's going to be able to help guide them um, with all kinds of challenges that come up in high school and then after high school as well. What actually happens within advisory is going to be a, a lot of different things. There's going to be a lot of stuff, I think, covered in the ninth grade advisory that you're actually addressing with your podcast. So the issues that kids are facing coming into high school, some of the challenges with, you know, what are the opportunities out there? How do I fit in different social, emotional learning um, components? Um, there's a lot of stuff that we're going to be building into the advisory just to help these kids transition into high school. And a lot of the, th the skills that we're going to build in and address in advisory, everybody agrees that they should be taught in high school, but it's like, well, where do you put it? You, yeah, exactly. You, you don't put it in a science class or an English class necessarily, or, you know, it, it, we're going to put it in advisory. So we're going to have some structure to this. We're going to, you know, have some really good talking conversation or, some, you know, talking points and conversations as a group. Um, we're also going to be able to, to accomplish a lot of their career portfolio and, and get those artifacts through advisory. So we look at it as an opportunity to give the kids a mentor, but kind of give them a head start on, on uh, starting to consider things for after high school. Yeah, as somebody that's not currently in the, the Jasper Learning Initiative, when I saw the advisory piece, I'm like, ooh, I hope that's something that, hopefully it translates to the entire building because like you know i think every student would benefit from something like the advisory period so i'm hoping i can't wait to see what that looks like because to me that seems like something that every 
ninth grade student hopefully will eventually get at some point and i just think it's a really cool idea to kind of take that large school and we're trying to do all these things to help students to get acclimated to the high school and then you're kind of setting them up with somebody for f hopefully four years and they if they stick with the program so that I'm, I'm really excited to see what the advisory piece is going to be and I, i'm sure that it will be super beneficial for the students coming in because while we have our two counselors and they're awesome you know, there's only two of them for mm -hmm. 700 kids. If we can kind of help kids make these connections uh, when they come in to somebody that's a, maybe in the career path that they want to go in or a subject area, seems like it's a no-brainer that would be a, like a, an effective thing for students as they kind of come in. Yep. Um, so a couple more questions here as we wind down. Um, so in looking at the way that the schedule breaks down, um, it's pretty set for the ninth grade year. But after the ninth grade year, it kind of seems like there's a lot of room that could uh, it could change a little bit or to, to grow and develop, like you talked about the community partnerships. Mm -hmm. And on the on the site, it talked about how students can actually influence the future of the Jasper program a little bit by you know giving some feedback. So what? Um, what do you hope that it looks like after year one? Like, how are the students going to be able to add their feedback? And, and is the program responsive enough to be able to, like, be kind of tailored to meet those student needs as they kind of go forward? Because, you know, there's, <laughs> excuse me, there are people that are kind of on board to teach it after the, the ninth grade year. But um, what is it going to look like? So if I'm a, an eighth grader and I'm like, yes, I'm in on Jasper I understand what it's going to be for ninth grade, but what is it going to mean for me for the next three years mm -hmm. of high school? Um, that's a yeah, very frequently asked question, but I think um, there, there's two different points that I, that I'd like to bring up. The first one is we, we have a, a good idea, not uh, it's not 100%, but we have a good idea of what's going to happen with their coursework for, uh, throughout the four years. So English is very simple. They're going to go from English 9 to 10 to 11 to 12. In, America, uh, in social studies, you know, they, they can go through their, their same track. Science gets a little bit different, given that we have so many different science classes here at Mays High School that um, we're going to be uh, offering the kids the project-based GSI and then project-based bio. After that, um, the thought right now is let them go explore and go take the other science classes that are more interesting or more relevant, uh, given their interests. So maybe yeah. that means they're going to go to physics or um, earth and space or environmental or, or who knows what. But basically give them that freedom. Um, design development, that's one where we don't know f yet what that, what that class is going to be in the sophomore year. Um, that, that's part of the conversation that we're going to have in the next, next few months. A lot of this has been driven by numbers and how many kids want to be in Jasper. Um, for a good example of that is the wellness fitness. So um, we have, we're, we're able to offer the kids a half credit of their, their PE, the wellness and fitness, in their freshman year. And we'll be able to do another half credit their sophomore year. Those kids can then be done with PE after their sophomore year and have junior and senior year a little bit more freed up in their schedule to go do other electives that they might want. So that's, um, you know, that's going to be really helpful. So it, um, it, we also want to make sure that the kids have opportunities to take those electives, to take courses at Emmaus High School that are in their, their, yeah, their what, interest. Yeah, what they want to take. Yeah. yeah. So that's like one of the, the first questions that I ask kids when I find out that they're, you know, kind of interested in Jasper's like, you know, what are your interests? Like, what do you like? What do you, you know, maybe what do you want to do later? And, and again, there, there's been... There hasn't been a kid yet where I haven't been able to say, well, here's how you can go through Jasper doing the different courses that you would want to have to prepare you for this. And, you know, we can definitely do that. But the second thing you asked about was how kids can have an input in, in the program. And I think with, with Jasper, what's, um, what's going to be one of the challenges, but a fun challenge, is listening to our faculty, staff, listening to our students on what works and what doesn't work. And if it's not working, then let's do everything we can to make it work in the future. So, um, you know, part of the advisory, we're going to give kids more of a voice. So it, it's almost like, uh, you know, when you think about a traditional student government, having having kids in a student government that can speak and that can advocate and, you know, basically, um, you know, get some action role and just from, from using their voice, we want to be able to offer that to our kids. If something's not working, we want to fix it. So this is not a program that is going to be firm, set in stone and like, nope, that is what it is. And I hope you like it for four years. <laughs> like we're going to do what's do what's right for, for all the people involved. Yeah. And and. That and in the uh, the uh, the form the 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 I'm trying to think of the word the it, commitment the, form the commitment mm -hmm. form I liked one of the questions on it it said describe a, an exciting learning experience you recently had and I think that's really a key is like getting kids excited about learning and kind of getting them to think about it and hopefully they've had some but I don't know like if you ask like the traditional high school student about an exciting learning experience I don't know if a lot of them could identify 
something that they would think is exciting. So it seems like to me that like through this program, it's going to open up the door a little bit to some of those quote unquote more exciting learning experiences for kids, which I'm, I'm sure you're excited about and kind of, you know, something that you kind of built your teaching career on, you know, when you, when you go to Alaska and you see some of the stuff there that I'm sure that's, you know, that's exciting. And that'll be something that a kid remembers for the remainder of their lives. Cause you know, not everyone has a chance to go explore some of the places that you've been able to take kids. So, um, it's just those unique experiences and those kinds of things. Um, so one other question here before we kind of wrap up is, and this was something that I saw and had a question about. So if I'm an eighth grader coming up and I'm looking, um, what are the advantages or how is Jasper different than LCTI? Both of them are like preparing you for a career. Both of them, you know, have their pluses and minuses, but it, what is the difference there? If you're looking for somebody that's interested in Jasper and and trying to explain to them, you know, the difference between the two, why Jasper and not LCTI? Mm -hmm. So I think, um, some of the, some of the kids that have asked questions about Jasper that are also interested in LCTI, um, the good news for them is I don't think that they can go wrong either way. And I usually ask them, like, what is it exactly that you are interested in studying, especially up at LCTI? Some of those programs are, are fantastic. And that might be, depending on their interest and what program they want, that might be the best choice for them. But there's still some programs that I think, um, you know, if they go to LCTI or they stay here, I think we can prepare them for, um, for either. But then we're also seeing a lot of kids that don't know what exactly they want to do. And, and so they're stuck trying to figure out, well, I don't really know what I want to do after high school but I want to kind of have like a high school experience. Um, and then they say like, what, what do you recommend? So, um, I've just been, you know, I, like I said before with, with, um, with Jasper, like it's, it's a really good program, but it's not the best program for everybody. I think it could be a great program for some kids. So it's just a matter of finding like the best fit for each individual. So in general, that the differences are going to be that our kids are still going to have like the, the, all of the CP classes that you would have in traditional Mays High School, they're still going to have them all here mm. where they're not going to LCTI to have, you know, some of those different different courses and be here then for half the day if they were doing the LCTI or LCTI half day. So they'd be here the whole time. Uh, they would get to do the traditional classes in just more of an authentic project-based way. And that right there is is what some kids might want. So I... I don't know if I'm right or wrong with this one, but it just seems like right now we have we have two extremes. We have like the regular high school experience, and then we have LCTI. I think this might be something in the middle where we give kids an opportunity to do more uh, creation, but still being part of Emmaus High School and not going up to LCTI if they don't know exactly what program they want to study up. Yeah, I think that's a unique way to put it is that it is kind of like a middle of the two things where you have this, you know, the hands for the students that like those hands on things, you know, that we traditionally say like they should probably explore like LCTI, but you're offering those, you're basically offering those hands on things here at Emmaus High School with a little bit more, you know, of the academics that are here at Emmaus High School as opposed to the ones at LCTI. Yeah. And one thing to add, it's, you know, even though I said it's kind of like in between from, um, and I think what's new to everybody involved is we've only in the past really offered different courses and they, they usually ask, well, what level is this honors, AP, CP, you know, whatever this, this is different. Like, yeah, we're saying that like, yeah, these are all going to be CP classes, but the, the key here is it's the way in which you want to learn. If kids are signing up for Jasper, they are saying, I want to learn in a more project based way. And that's awesome. Like we want to be able to give them that option. I mean, the teachers are going to teach that way. So really it's, it's not so much about the level or the rigor, um, even though it is CP, it's more about how do you want to learn? How do you want your high school experience to look and to, to be like? So at this point, um, so if you want your high school experience to look like what we've talked a lot about today in the Jasper Learning Initiative, where can people find out more information and how do they sign up for it? Yeah, so we have a lot of our information on our website, which is www.eastpennsd.org slash Jasper. Um, when you go there, there is literally tons of information on there. Um, you can learn so much. But then I also encourage you, if you go through that and you're not getting what, you, uh, what you're looking for, if you just have questions, you can always reach out to me at mmahalik at eastpennsd.org, and I'd be happy to help. I found that one-on-one -on -one conversations have really been the way to go with, with um with kids and parents up to this point, because it doesn't take long for their own personal unique interest to come out. And we definitely want to, to want to speak to that instead of it being a generic, um, you know, communication. So I, I again, encourage everyone to reach out to me if you have questions, but um, the website should be, should be pretty helpful for a lot of those entry level type questions that people might have. And also too, uh, you can follow them. They're on Instagram. It's jasper.initiative. And then on Twitter, it's at Jasper learning. And that's where they, you know, over the weekend, they, they let out some of the information about some of their partnership 
partnership. So if you're looking to see what the next uh, partnership is and all the new, uh, the newest information about Jasper, uh, they're they're tweeting a lot of that stuff out as well too. So um, I'd like to thank um, Mike here for taking some time out to explain the program. Um, depending on when this goes up, there's a session that will be held today, um, one here in the school district during the course of the day, which I don't think will be up before that. Um, but there is one that will be at this afternoon at IRE at four o'clock. Are there other plans? Um, I know right now. Um, I would say almost halfway to the number that you're looking for, kind of, as we're kind of trying to draw mm -hmm. some more uh, people towards it. So are there other plans to have any more of these, like, kind of in-person, informal sessions about kind of learning about it? Or we Yeah, that's something we'll talk about, and we'll, we'll make a plan for that. Um, we've got, well, as you know, with the, the course registration process at the high school, we've we kind of got, like, our first big big point um, coming up next week where the kids are going to be, where I guess the courses are going to go into, into power school. So yep. we're, we're doing what we got to do right now to educate all those people right now going you know, for the next week and week and a half. But then, um, yeah, we'll probably have other sessions again in, um, later in February or March. All right. So thanks a lot for explaining this process to us. Hopefully um, people that are listening are intrigued by it. And I think it sounds like it's going to be a really cool experience here at Emmaus High School. So thanks a lot for joining us, Mike. Thank you for having me.